monorail is one of the methods of transportation. Some of them can be suspended by magnetic levitation, others can use wheels and ride the rails. This is an aerial perspective of a monorail station with entrance and exits on the side of the highway. This is actually a true monorail because it is one rail system that supports two trains. Most monorails aren't really monorails. They consist of two tracks. This is accomplished on one track. The vehicles of the future will be highly aerodynamic in shape. Their shape will permit the minimum amount of skin resistance, giving you the maximum distance for minimum fuel consumption. The front end of the car will be equipped with radar or sonar or other sensory devices that can detect the distance you are from other vehicles and maintain that separation automatically. In other words, on a highway or anywhere where two cars might hit each other, the electronic sensors would sense the distance automatically and keep the cars from sideswiping or making contact at all. Now even if they did and impinge a slight dent in the car, the car would be made up of the memory materials, shape memory alloys that go back to the original shape even when dented. I'm going to take this metal called nitinol. This wire or spring is wound around a mandrel and heated to a specific temperature and held until it cools. Then when you pull it out beyond its elastic limit, so it's not about to return to the spring shape, and then deform it in many different ways. Then if it's heated, I'll put it on this form so it won't drift away. And I'm going to heat that metal. You can watch it return to its original shape. It's called shape memory alloys. It could be done in plastics, metals, or any other materials in the future. Watch how it returns. And even if the area of the car were removed, they can be rebuilt, in other words, automatically, by the car having a memory system of its configuration, just like the human body, just like perhaps in lizards and salamanders and certain types of organisms today can regenerate parts of their body. The technology of the future will enable our automotive vehicles to repair and regenerate damaged areas. This is a transport unit, or air suspended unit. It will travel five or four feet above the ground, and not requiring highways or bridges. You can turn around by electrodynamic means, discharging air on the right or left side, not by tunneled air paths, but just by attracting air or repelling air. I did this about 65 years ago. This is what an automobile will look like in the future. It'll have sensors on it. So if I got mad at you, and when I get within a certain, the brakes go on. If I'm backing up and there's a child crossing, the car stops. No one drowns in a swimming pool because the net comes up when you're not home. Is that clear? If somebody falls in the pool and you're busy cooking, the child sinks to the water and it comes up right away. What do you want? What kind of world do you want? Okay. Uh, so what you see here is just glimpses of the future. So we'll go around and look the place over so you've got a better idea. Now that area over there, across the water, we will build a very large dome, like a center for dialogue, to do, invite different people out here.
this is a freighter with separate sections. This freighter can deliver this to the Philippines, drop this off in Hawaii, and so when all of the freight bays are released, they are propelled automatically to the loading docks, and then the forward portion of the ship and the rear portion, which is the propulsion unit, are joined together. So you always travel at a balanced load. You never travel with an empty hull back. So using energy that way conserves millions of gallons of fuel if you use fuel in the conventional sense. This is a possible propulsion method. In this instance, water is drawn toward the surface of the ship electrodynamically. And in turn, the ship's reaction is forward, away from the pressure toward the rear. It's like holding a peach pit and squeezing it, and it moves forward. It has far less wake, less water turbulence, and very little energy consumed. What you see here is an illustration of underwater transportation for the future. And the very leading edge, air bubbles will be emitted very rapidly in front of the unit, and that will cut down the resistance considerably. If you were to release thousands of air bubbles underneath a ship, it would sink, because the water is less buoyant with the air bubbles in it. So the air bubbles will be a system in the future for reducing the forward resistance. Transporting things underwater is much more economical and offers much less resistance. When traveling on the surface, you're confronted with waves and wave motion. Underwater, you don't have that problem at all. We talk about civilization as though it's a static state. Right. And there are no civilized people yet. It's a process that's constantly going on. We're not civilized, it's an ongoing process. Yeah. And so we never become fully civilized because we'd have to know quite a bit in order to behave in the most constructive manner. And that goes for intelligence. I don't know if I've talked to you about an electrical engineer of 75 years ago, an intelligent one, couldn't get a job today. Right. So when you talk of intelligence, what are you talking about? It's an ongoing process. It isn't. That's why there's no such thing as an intelligent person, that if people are fairly well informed in area A and B, mm. not informed in area C. Mm. And so when you go on with a word like civilization, it sounds like something that was attained. As long as you have war, police, prisons, mm. crime, you're in the early stages of civilization, what they call civilization. This type of helicopter or aircraft would have its propulsion unit at the tip of the blades. They'd be relatively small, high thrust. The center of the disc or the passenger compartment would remain stationary while the blades spun around. In the event of engine failure, the blades can automatically gyrate and bring the craft down, not only vertically, but can travel forward by tilting. You will notice that there are no ailerons or elevators on this plane. It's operated in a different manner, also by ion propulsion. Electron discharge is much lighter, much cheaper, much safer.